Good day. Welcome to episode 19 of um, our Bible, a canonical reading. We are now on the Messianic fulfillment, Jesus as the culmination of Old Testament promises. The Jesus event, Introduction to Messianic Fulfillment, Part 1. This session begins to tie the threads of the story together in Messianic Fulfillment, focusing on how Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all Old Testament promises. It looks at Jesus, the man, who he was and what he taught during his ministry in Galilee, emphasizing the importance of the Jubilee and the significance of Jesus' message of deliverance. Understanding how Jesus embodies and completes the prophetic hopes of the Old Testament is crucial to comprehending the broader narrative of salvation history. Jesus fulfills the story. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, when the time had fully come. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, Paul highlights the divine timing of Jesus' arrival, emphasizing that God sent His Son, born of a woman, and under the law, to redeem those under the law so that they might receive adoption as children of God. This passage underscores the perfect fulfillment of God's redemptive plan through Jesus. Paul writes, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child then, also an heir through God. This passage highlights several key aspects of Jesus' mission. First, it emphasizes the timing of His coming, which was ordained by God and fulfilled at the perfect moment in history. Second, it underscores Jesus' humanity and His fulfillment of the law being born of a woman and under the law. Third, it points to the redemptive purpose of his mission, which is to redeem humanity from the bondage of sin and the law. Finally, it emphasizes the transformative impact of his mission, bringing believers into a new relationship with God as His adopted children, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to call God Father. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 10, the mystery of His will. Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 9 to 10, reveals God's plan for the fullness of time, which is to unite all things in Christ both in heaven and on earth. Paul writes, He has made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, that He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. This passage further illustrates the comprehensive scope of Jesus' mission and His central role in God's ultimate plan for creation. The mystery referred to here is God's long hidden plan to bring about a universal reconciliation 
and unity through Jesus Christ. This mystery, once hidden, has now been revealed in Jesus. The fullness of time denotes the culmination of God's redemptive history, the perfect moment chosen by God to reveal His plan. Through Jesus, all things are gathered up and united, signifying a cosmic reconciliation that restores harmony to all creation. This passage affirms the centrality of Christ in God's salvific plan and highlights the universal scope of His redemptive work. Recapitulation Jesus reliving and fulfilling the Old Testament Jesus' life and ministry can be seen as a recapitulation of Israel's history where Israel, as God's firstborn, repeatedly failed to keep His covenants, Jesus, the faithful Son of God, perfectly fulfills and establishes the new covenant promised from of old. His actions, words, and the places of His ministry all correlate with significant events in Israel's history. For instance, Jesus' time in the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan, mirrors Israel's 40 years of wandering in the desert. Unlike Israel, who failed to trust and obey God, Jesus remained faithful and obedient, demonstrating his role as the true and faithful Israelite. His miracles teachings, and fulfillment of prophecy all point to his role as the culmination of Israel's story and the fulfillment of God's promises. The geographic story, the context of Jesus' life. Jesus was born into a specific geographical, cultural, and religious context. Understanding the, the geography culture, and life circumstances of the time helps us to, un to better grasp the significance of his actions and teachings. Jesus' Jewish heritage and adherence to the covenanted relationship with God are integral to his mission. The land of Israel, with its rich history and religious significance, provides the backdrop for Jesus' ministry. He was born in Bethlehem, a town with prophetic significance as the birthplace of the Messiah. See Micah chapter 5, verse 2. He grew up in Nazareth, a small town in Galilee, and conducted much of his ministry in this region fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy that a great light would shine in Galilee. That is in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 2. The Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, and the city of Jerusalem all play pivotal roles in his ministry and the unfolding of God's redemptive plan. Exile and return as keys to understanding his mission. The themes of exile and return are pivotal in understanding Jesus' mission. The Jews return from exile, representing re repentance and grace, parallels the mission of Christ to establish God's kingdom. The returning remnants witness the unfolding of this divine mission during Jesus' time. The exile was a period of great suffering and reflection for the Jewish people, leading to a deepened understanding of their need for God's mercy and redemption. The return from exile, marked by the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the temple, symbolizes 
God's faithfulness and the hope of restoration. Jesus' mission can be seen as fulfillment of this hope as He brings about a new and ultimate return from the exile of sin and death. Through His death and resurrection, Jesus opens the way for humanity to return to God and enter into His kingdom. The coming of the Messiah John the Baptist, the herald of the Messiah Luke chapter 1, 5 to 25 John the Baptist's birth to Elizabeth and Zechariah, who were initially barren, signifies the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. His life and mission, characterized by the spirit and power of Elijah, prepared the way for the Lord. John's role as the forerunner to Christ is crucial in heralding the coming Messiah. The miraculous birth of John to elderly parents who had long been childless is a powerful sign of God's intervention and faithfulness. John is described as a Nazarite from birth, dedicated to God and filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. His mission is to turn the hearts of the people back to God and to prepare them for the coming of the Messiah. John fulfills the prophecy of Malachi who foretold that Elijah would return before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4, 5 to 6. Jesus himself identifies John as the Elijah who was to come. That is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. Mary, the mother of the Messiah. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. The Annunciation to Mary by the, by the angel Gabriel marks a significant moment in the salvation history. Mary, a humble young woman, is chosen by God to bear his son, who will be the Messiah. The angel's mas message reveals Jesus' divine mission and the establishment of God's kingdom through him. Mary's response to the angel, Let it be done to me according to your word, exemplifies her faith and obedience. She becomes the new Ark of the Covenant, carrying within her the Word made flesh, the Bread of Life, and the Great High Priest. The angel's message emphasizes Jesus' royal lineage as the heir to the throne of David and his divine sonship as the Son of the Most High. This announcement fulfills the prophecies of Isaiah and other prophets heralding the dawn of a new era in God's redemptive plan. The Birth of Jesus The birth of Jesus celebrated annually at Christmas is central to the understanding of the Incarnation. Jesus, fully human, and fully divine, enters the world to fulfill the redemptive plan of God. The, the, the doctrine of the hypostatic union affirmed by the church underscores the mystery of Jesus' dual nature. The circumstances of Jesus' birth, including his humble birth in a manger in Bethlehem, fulfill the prophecies and foreshadow his mission of humility and service. The shepherds, representing the marginalized and humble, are first to receive the news of his birth, highlighting 
the inclusivity of his mission, the angel's proclamation of peace and goodwill to all emphasizes the universal scope of Jesus' redemptive work. Jesus the man. Jesus, Jewish heritage. Jesus was a Jew who lived and thought like a Jew. His words and actions were deeply rooted in the Jewish context of his time. The understanding of Jesus as the Son of God evolved post-Easter as his contemporaries primarily saw him as a man, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus observed Jewish customs and participated in Jewish religious practices. He taught in synagogues, observed the Sabbath, and celebrated Jewish festivals such as Passover. His teachings and parables open drew on Jewish scriptures and traditions, making them accessible and relevant to his Jewish audience. Jesus' Jewish identity is essential to understanding his mission and the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus as Rabbi Jesus was known and addressed as Rabbi, signifying his role as a teacher. The Gospels highlight both the similarities and differences between Jesus and other rabbis, emphasizing his unique authority and mission. Unlike other rabbis, Jesus taught with a unique authority that astonished his listeners. He often challenged the interpretations and practices of the religious leaders of his time, emphasizing the spirit of the law rather than mere adherence to its letter. Jesus' teachings focus on the heart and the inner transformation required to enter the kingdom of God. His parables, miracles, and actions all serve to reveal deeper spiritual roots and invite his followers into a transformative relationship with God. Simeon and the Consolation of Israel Luke chapter 2, 25 to 32 Simeon's recognition of Jesus as the Consolation of Israel encapsulates the fulfillments of centuries of prophecies and promises. Jesus is seen as the culmination of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and the prophets. When Simeon takes the infant Jesus in, ar in his arms, he declares that he has seen God's salvation, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for Israel. This moment highlights the universal significance of Jesus' mission and the fulfillment of God's promises. Simeon's prophecy also foreshadows the suffering that Jesus and his mother Mary will endure, pointing to the redemptive nature of his mission. Announcement of the Messiah John the Baptist's proclamation in Luke 3 John the Baptist's message drawing from Isaiah 40 calls for the preparation of the way for the Lord. This marks the beginning of the restoration and consolation promised by God. The fullness of consolation is realized with the arrival of the Messiah identified as Jesus. John's call to repentance and baptism prepares the people for the coming of Jesus. He emphasizes the need for a radical transformation of heart and life, warning of the, the coming judgment 
and the need for genuine repentance. John's proclamation fulfills Isaiah's prophecy of a voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord and making his paths straight. Importance of the Jordan Recapitulation The Jordan River holds significant historical and theological importance. It is the site of Israel's entry into the Promised Land. Elijah's ascent to heaven, and Jesus' baptism. This local location symbolizes the continuity and fulfillment of God's promises through Jesus. The crossing of the Jordan by the Israelites under Joshua's leadership marked the beginning of their new life in the Promised Land. Elijah's miraculous crossing of the Jordan and his subsequent ascent to heaven symbolizes the prophetic tradition that John the Baptist continues. Jesus' baptism in, baptism in the Jordan signifies the inauguration of his public ministry and the revelation of his identity as the Son of God. This event also prefigures his death and resurrection the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan. Baptism of Jesus The baptism of Jesus signifies the inauguration of his ministry and marks the decline of John's, John the Baptist's role. It prefigures Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and demonstrates his identification with repentant sinners. At his baptism, Jesus is anointed by the Holy Spirit and affirmed by the Father's voice from heaven, declaring him as the beloved Son. This event highlights the Trinitarian nature of God and the unity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the work of redemption. Jesus' baptism also sets the pattern for the Christian baptism, symbolizing repentance, purification, and the new life in Christ. Conclusion The session explores the profound ways in which Jesus fulfills the Old Testament prophecies and promises, establishing the new covenant and inaugurating the kingdom of God. By understanding the historical, cultural, and theological context of his life and ministry, we gain deeper insights into the significance of his mission as the Messiah. Through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus brings about the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan, offering salvation a new life to all who believe in Him. The Geographic Story The Context of Jesus' Life Jesus was born in Bethlehem, a town located in the Judean hills, known for its significant prophetic history as the birthplace of King David and foretold as the birthplace of as the birthplace of the Messiah. That is in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. This small town's historical and prophetic significance underscores the fulfillment of God's promises and the continuity of His redemptive plan. Bethlehem's location in Judea, a region steeped in Jewish religious and cultural traditions, provided the initial backdrop for Jesus' life and mission. Jesus grew up in Nazareth, a small and relatively obscure town in Galilee. Nazareth's insignificance is highlighted by Nathaniel's question, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That is in John chapter 1, verse 46. Despite its humble reputation, Nazareth 
played a crucial role in Jesus' formative years. The region of Galilee, known for its mixed population and diverse cultural influences, was fertile ground for Jesus' ministry. The Sea of Galilee, a central feature of the region, became the setting for many of his teachings and miracles. Cultural Context Jesus' life was deeply embedded in Jewish culture and religious practices. He participated in the annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover feast, observed the Sabbath, and adhered to the laws and customs of Judaism. Understanding this cultural context is essential to comprehending his teachings and actions. For instance, his use of parables, a common teaching method in Jewish tradition, resonated with his audience's familiarity with storytelling as a means of conveying moral and spiritual truths. The socio-political environment of first century Palestine was marked by Roman occupation and governance. The per presence of Roman authorities and their imposition of taxes and laws created a backdrop of tension and unrest. This context influenced the expectations of a Messiah who would deliver the Jewish people from Roman oppression. Jesus' message of a spiritual kingdom rather than a political revolution often confounded and challenged these expectations. Religious Context Jesus' ministry was rooted in the Jewish faith and its covenantal relationship with God. The temple in Jerusalem, the epicenter of Jewish worship and sacrificial rites, held significant religious importance. Jesus' cleansing of the temple, where he drove out the money changers, highlighted his commitment to the purity of worship and the need for reform within the religious establishments. That is in John 2, 13 to 16. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and other religious groups played prominent roles in the religious landscape of Jesus' time. The Pharisees, known for their uh, strict adherence to the law and traditions, often clash with Jesus over issues of legalism and hypocrisy. The Sadducees, who controlled the temple and were associated with the priestly aristocracy, also found themselves at odds with Jesus, particularly over theological differences such as the belief in resurrection. Exile and return as keys to understanding his mission. Historical background of exile and return. The Babylonian exile, which began in 586 BCE, was a defining moment in Jewish history. The destruction of the temple and the subsequent deportation of many Jews to Babylon mark a period of profound loss and reflection. During the exile, the Jewish people grappled with, with their identity, faith, and relationship with God. Prophets like Jeremiah and Ezekiel provided hope and assurance of God's continued faithfulness, even in the midst of judgment. The Return from Exile Initiated by the decree of Cyrus the Great in 538 BCE, allowed the Jews to rebuild the temple and restore their religious practices in Jerusalem. This return, while not fully realized by all Jews, symbolized renewed commitment to God and the reestablishment of the covenant, covenantal relationship. 
the themes of repentance, restoration, and divine grace permeated the prophetic writings of this period, shaping the collective consciousness of the Jewish people. Parallels with Jesus' Mission The themes of exile and return are pivotal in understanding Jesus' mission. Just as the Jews experienced physical and spiritual exile, humanity as a whole is in a state of exile due to sin. Jesus' mission is to bring about a return from this exile by establishing God's kingdom and restoring the relationship between God and His people. The message of repentance and the invitation to enter the kingdom of God echo the prophetic calls for repentance and restoration during the Babylonian exile. Jesus often used imagery and language associated with exile and return in his teachings. For instance, the parable of the prodigal son, which we can glean on in uh, Luke chapter 15, 11 to 32, reflects the themes of exile, repentance, and return. The younger son, who squanders his inheritance and finds himself in a distant land, represents humanity's estrangement from God. His return to his father's house, marked by repentance and acceptance, mirrors the divine invitation to return to a restored relationship with God. Witnessing the Divine Mission The remnants of the Jewish people who returned from exile played a significant role in the unfolding of God's plan during Jesus' time. These remnants, who remained faithful and hopeful, witnessed the fulfillment of God's promises through Jesus' Jesus's life and ministry. The Gospel accounts often highlight individuals who exemplify this faithfulness, such as Simeon and Anna who recognized Jesus as the Messiah when he was presented in the temple. That is in Luke chapter 2, 25 to 38. The concept of a faithful remnant is also evident in Jesus' selection of his disciples. These individuals, drawn from various walks of life, represent a new beginning and the continuation of God's redemptive work. They are entrusted with the mission of proclaiming the kingdom of God and bearing witness to the fulfillment of the prophetic promises in Jesus. Their role as witnesses and messengers underscores the continuity and fulfillment of the themes of exile and return in the broader narrative of salvation history. Establishing God's Kingdom Jesus' mission is fundamentally about establishing God's kingdom, a spiritual realm characterized by righteousness, justice, and peace. This kingdom is not confined to a specific geographic location but uh, transcends early boundaries. It is inaugurated through Jesus' life, death and resurrection, and continues to expand through the work of the Holy Spirit and the mission of the Church. The Sermon on the Mount provides a comprehensive vision of the values and principles of God's Kingdom. Jesus' teachings on the Beatitudes the fulfillment of the law and the call to love one's enemies reflect the transformative nature of the kingdom. These teachings challenge conventional understandings of power, success, and righteousness, inviting followers to adopt 
a radical way of life centered on God's will. The role of repentance and grace. Repentance and grace are central to the themes of exile and return. Just as the Jews were called to repent and return to God during the Babylonian exile, Jesus calls all people to repentance and offers the grace of forgiveness and new life. His message emphasizes that true repentance involves a change of heart and a realignment of one's life with God's purposes. The parables of Jesus often highlight the themes of repentance and grace. The parable of the lost sheep, which we can glean at Luke chapter 15, 1 to 7, for example, illustrates God's relentless pursuit of those who are lost and his joy in their return. Similarly, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, contrasts the self-righteousness of the Pharisee with the humble repentance of the tax collector, demonstrating that God's grace is extended to those who recognize their need for it. The unfolding of the divine mission. The mission of Jesus unfolds within the context of first century Palestine, a land marked by both hope and oppression. The Roman occupation and the socio-political tensions of the time provide a backdrop to Jesus' ministry. Despite these challenges, Jesus' message of the kingdom of God offers a transformative vision that transcends political and social boundaries. Jesus' miracles such as healing the sick, raising the dead, and feeding the multitudes are signs of the kingdom's presence and the fulfillment of God's promises. These acts of compassion and power demonstrate the inbreaking of God's reign and the restoration of creation. The feeding of the 5,000, John 6, 1-14, and the raising of Lazarus in John 11, 1-44 are poignant examples of how Jesus' action fulfilled the prophetic hopes of renewal and life. The significance of Jesus' teachings. Jesus' teachings are foundational to understanding the mission and the nature of God's kingdom. His parables, sermons, and discourses reveal the values and principles that define the kingdom. The parable of the Good Samaritan, which you can glean on in Luke uh, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, for instance, challenges societal norms and calls for a radical love that transcends ethnic and religious boundaries. The Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, chapter uh, verses 9 to 13 encapsulates the heart of Jesus' teaching on the kingdom. It is a prayer for the realization of God's reign on earth, for the provision of daily needs, for forgiveness, and for deliverance from evil. This prayer lift, reflects the holistic nature of the kingdom encompassing spiritual, physical, and relational dimensions of life. Jesus' death and resurrection. The culmination of Jesus' mission is his death and resurrection. These events are the definitive acts of God's redemptive plan, bringing about the ultimate return from exile. Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross atones for humanity's sins, while His resurrection conquers death 
and inaugurates new life. The cross, a symbol of Roman execution and oppression, becomes a symbol of salvation and hope. Jesus' resurrection is the cornerstone of Christian faith, affirming the victory of life over death and the promise of eternal life for all who believe. The empty tomb is a testament to the fulfillment of God's promises and the assurance of His continual presence and power. The Commissioning of the Disciples After His resurrection, Jesus commissions His disciples to continue His mission. The Great Commission which we can find in Matthew 28, 18-20, charges them with the task of making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that Jesus has commanded. Jesus the man. Jesus' Jewish heritage, cultural and religious context. Jesus was born into a devout Jewish family and community, which shaped his early life and ministry. His parents, Mary and Joseph, adhered to Jewish customs and traditions as evidenced by their observance of rituals such as the presentation of Jesus at the temple and the annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem for, for Passover. That is in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 41. This upbringing immersed Jesus in the rich tapestry of Jewish religious practices, with scriptural teachings and cultural norms, providing the foundation for his later teachings and actions. The Jewish context of Jesus' life is critical to understanding his mission and message. He spoke Aramaic, a common language of the Jewish people in his region, and he likely had a working knowledge of Hebrew for reading the scriptures. His parables, teachings, and debates with religious leaders were framed with a Jewish worldview, drawing heavily on the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. For instance, Jesus frequently quoted and referenced the Torah, the prophets, and the writings demonstrating his deep familiarity with this text. Jesus and the Law Jesus' relationship with the Jewish law, which is the Torah, is a central theme in the Gospels. While he respected and upheld the law, he also challenged and reinterpreted it in ways that emphasize its underlying principles of justice, mercy, and love. In the Sermon on the Mount, which we can find in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 7, Jesus presents a series of teachings that deepen and expand the understanding of the law. He declares, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. That's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. In this context, fulfilling the law means bringing out its fullest meaning and intent. Jesus critiques superficial or legalistic interpretations and practices, calling his followers to a higher standard of righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. This higher standard is ex ex exemplified in his teachings on issues such as anger, lust, divorce, oaths, uh, retaliation, and um, love for enemies, which is in we can find in Matthew chapter five, verses twenty-one to forty-eight. By focusing on the spirit rather than the letter of the law. Jesus emphasizes the importance of inner transformation and genuine obedience to God's will. 
Jesus' identity and mission. During his lifetime, Jesus was primarily known and understood by his contemporaries as a man, Jesus of Nazareth. He lived among his people, shared their daily experiences, and participated in their communal life. This human aspect of Jesus is essential to his role as the Messiah, for it affirms his full identification with humanity. The incarnation, the belief that Jesus is both fully God and fully human, is a foundational Christian doctrine that underscores his ability to bridge the gap between God and humanity. The recognition of Jesus as the Son of God evolved post-Easter, particularly through the experiences and reflections of his disciples and the early Christian community. The, the resurrection was a pivotal event that transformed their understanding of Jesus' identity and mission. It confirmed this divinity and vindicated his claims, leading to the development of Christological doctrines that affirm his dual nature as true God and true man. Jesus as Rabbi Role and Function of a Rabbi In first century society, Jewish society, a rabbi was a teacher and interpreter of the law, someone who guided others in understanding and living according to God's commandments. Rabbis often gathered disciples who would follow them closely, learning not only from their teachings but also from their way of life. This discipleship model was characterized by a close personal relationship between the rabbi and his followers, emphasizing imitation and apprenticeship. Jesus was known and addressed as rabbi, signifying his role as a respected teacher. He gathered a group of disciples who followed him, learned from his teachings, and observes, observed his actions. The Gospels frequently depict Jesus teaching in synagogues, public places, and private homes, engaging with diverse audiences, and addressing a wide range of topics. His teachings covered various aspects of life, including ethics, theology, worship, and community relationships. Unique Authority and Mission While Jesus shared similarities with other rabbis of his time, his teaching and authority were distinct and unparalleled. Unlike other rabbis who cited earlier authority, authorities and interpretations, Jesus often spoke with direct and original authority. He used phrases like, But I say to you, asserting his unique interpretative authority over the law. This authoritative teaching style astonishes listeners as noted in Matthew chapter 7, 28 to 29. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teachings, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. Jesus' authority extended beyond his teachings to his actions. He performed miracles, healed the sick, cast out demons, and even forgive sins, acts that demonstrated his divine authority and compassion. These miracles serves, served as signs of the inbreaking of God's kingdom and authenticated his message. For instance, in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, Jesus heals a paralytic and forgives his sins prompting astonishment and controversy among the scribes who questions the authority 
to forgive sins. Radical teachings and innovations. Jesus introduced several radical teachings that set him apart from other rabbis. His emphasis on the inner disposition of the heart rather than mere external compliance with the law was revolutionary. He called for, for a purity of heart and a righteousness that stemmed from genuine love for God and neighbor. This is evident in his summary of the law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. That is in Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 to 40. Moreover, Jesus' Jesus's inclusivity and outreach to marginalized individuals, including sinners, Tax collectors, Sam Samaritans and Gentiles, challenged the prevailing social and religious norms. He broke down barriers of ethnicity, gender, and social status, offering God's grace and salvation to all. His interactions with individuals such as the Samaritan woman at the woman at the well in John 4, 1-42, and Zacchaeus, the tax collector in Luke 19, 1-10, exemplify his mission to seek and save the lost. Simeon and the Consolation of Israel. That is in Luke chapter 2, verses 25-32. to 32. The Prophetic Encounter. The account of Simeon in Luke 2, 25-32 provides a profound, profound insight into the recognition of Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promises. Simeon, described as a righteous and devout man, was waiting for the consolation of Israel, a term that encapsulates the hopes and expectations of the Jewish people for the coming Messiah. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Simeon entered the temple when Mary and Joseph brought the infant Jesus to fulfill the purification rites required by the law. Simeon's encounter with Jesus is marked by divine revelation and prophetic utterance. Taking Jesus in his arms, Simeon praised God, saying, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. That's in Luke chapter 2, 29 to 32. This declaration highlights the universal significance of Jesus' mission and the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan. Fulfillment of Prophecies Simeon's recognition of Jesus as the consolation of Israel signifies the fulfillment of centuries-old prophecies and promises. Throughout the Old Testament, God made covenants and promises to key figures such as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and the prophets. These promises included, included the coming of a Messiah who would deliver Israel, establish justice, and bring salvation to all nations. The prophetic writings, especially those of Isaiah, speak of a coming servant who would bring comfort and redemption to Israel. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 2 
for instance, proclaims comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. Isaiah chapter 42 verses 6 to 7 describes the servant as a light to the nations, opening the eyes of the blind and setting captives free. Simeon's proclamation echoes this themes, identifying Jesus as the one who brings light and salvation to both Israel and the Gentiles. The Universal Scope of Salvation Simeon's prophecy emphasizes the universal scope of Jesus' mission. While he is the glory of Israel, fulfilling the promises made to the patriarchs of the prophets, he is also a light for revelation to the Gentiles. This inclusivity reflects the broader vision of God's redemptive plan, which extends beyond the boundaries of Israel to encompass all nations and peoples. The inclusion of the Gentiles in God's plan of salvation was a radical and often controversial idea in the Jewish context of Jesus' time. Many Jews expected the Messiah to be a national deliverer who would restore Israel's political sovereignty. However, Jesus' mission was for far more expansive, aiming to reconcile all of humanity to God. This universal dimension of salvation is a recurring theme in the New Testament, as seen in passages such as John chapter 3, uh, verse 16, which declares God's love for the world and His desire to offer eternal life to all who believe in Jesus. Implications for the Early Church Simeon's prophecy and the recognition of Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promises had profound implications for the early Christian community. The early church, composed initially of Jewish believers, gradually expanded to include Gentiles, reflecting the universal nature of the gospel. This expansion required a rethinking of traditional boundaries, and a redefinition of what is meant to be the people of God. The inclusion of Gentiles in the early church is a major theme in the Acts of the Apostles and the Pauline Epistles. Announcement of the Messiah John the Baptist's Proclamation In Luke 3, the role of John the Baptist John the Baptist emerges as a pivotal uh, figure in the New Testament, serving as the forerunner to Jesus and the herald of the Messiah's arrival. His ministry is deeply rooted in the prophetic traditions of the Old Testament, particularly the prophecy of Isaiah. In Luke 3, John the Baptist's message calls for the preparation of the way for the Lord, drawing directly from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 to 5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for Him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. Message of Repentance and Restoration John's message emphasizes repentance as the necessary preparation for the coming of the Messiah. He called the people of Israel to turn from their sins and be baptized as a sign of their repentance and readiness for the coming kingdom. 
This baptism was not merely a ritual, but a profound act of spiritual renewal and cleansing. John's call for repentance was a call to restore the covenant relationship between God and His people, addressing both personal and communal sin. The baptism of repentance that John preached was also a symbol of the larger restoration and consolation promised by God. His role was to prepare the hearts of the people, making them ready to receive the Messiah who would bring ultimate restoration. John's proclamation thus marked the beginning of the fulfillment of the prophecies of old heralding the dawn of a new era in salvation history. Identifying the Messiah John's proclamation reached its climax with the identification of Jesus as the Messiah. In John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming toward him and declares, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. The declaration not only identifies Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah, but also foreshadows his sacrificial role in God's redemptive plan. John's recognition of Jesus highlights the transition from the Old Covenant to the New, as Jesus embodies the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Importance of the Jordan Recapitulation Historical significance of the Jordan River The Jordan River holds a profound historical and theological significance in the biblical narrative. It is the site where the Israelites under Joshua's leadership cross into the promised land after their ex exodus from Egypt. That's in Joshua 3. This event marked the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham and the establishment of Israel as a nation. The Jordan thus symbolizes transition, fulfillment, and new beginning. Additionally, the Jordan River is where the prophet Elijah was taken up into heaven in a whirlwind, leaving his mantle to Elisha. That's in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. This event signified the passing of prophetic authority and the continuation of God's work through a new leader. The Jordan is therefore a place of prophetic succession and divine encounters. Theological Significance of the Jordan In the New Testament, the Jordan River becomes the site of Jesus' baptism by John. The event is rich with theological meaning, symbolizing the recapitulation and fulfillment of Israel's history. Just as the Israelites crossed the Jordan to enter the Promised Land, Jesus' baptism in the Jordan marks the beginning of His public ministry and the inauguration of the New Covenant. The Jordan River thus serves as a powerful symbol of continuity and fulfillment. It connects the Old, Test the Old Covenant and the new, illustrating how Jesus' ministry brings to fruition the promises and prophecies of the Old Testament. The sight of Jesus' baptism signifies the divine approval of His mission and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, marking Him as the Messiah who would bring salvation to all. Baptism of Jesus, Inauguration of Jesus' Ministry The baptism of Jesus is a seminal event that signifies 
the inauguration of his public ministry. According to the gospel accounts, as Jesus emerged from the waters of Jordan, the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended like a dove, alighting on him. A voice from heaven declared, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. That's in Matthew 3.16-17. This divine affirmation establishes Jesus' identity and mission. It publicly declares him as the Son of God and the chosen Messiah. The descent of the Holy Spirit anoints Jesus for his mission, empowering him for the work and that lies ahead. This moment also signifies the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy about the Spirit of the Lord resting upon the Messiah. That's in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. Prefiguring death, burial, and resurrection. The baptism of Jesus also prefigures his death, burial, and resurrection. In being baptized, Jesus identifies with humanity's sin and need for repentance, despite being sinless himself. This act foreshadows his ultimate sacrifice on the cross where he would take upon himself himself the sins of the world. The immersion in water symbolizes burial, and emerging from the water symbolizes resurrection, pointing to the core events of the Christian faith. By submitting to baptism, Jesus also affirms the importance of baptism for his followers. It becomes a sacrament of initiation into the Christian faith, symbolizing repentance, repentance, cleansing from sin, and the new life in Christ. Jesus' baptism thus sets a precedent for the practice of baptism in the Christian community. Transition from John to Jesus the baptism of Jesus marks a significant transition from the ministry of John the Baptist to that of Jesus. John's role as the forerunner and forerunner and preparer. John's role as the forerunner and preparer of the way is fulfilled, and the focus shifts to Jesus as the Messiah who brings the kingdom of God. John himself acknowledges this transition stating, He must increase, but I must decrease. That's in John chapter 3 verse 30. The transition highlights the continuity and fulfillment of God's plan. John's ministry prepares the way for Jesus, and Jesus' ministry fulfills the promises and prophecies that John heralded. The diminishing of John's role underscores the supremacy of Jesus and the new era of salvation that he inaugurates. Conclusion Fulfillment of Old Testament Prophecies and Promises This session explores the profound ways in which Jesus fulfills the Old Testament prophecies and promises. From the proclamation of John the Baptist to Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River, each event highlights the clarity and fulfillment of God's redemptive plan. Jesus embodies the culmination of Israel's history and the realization of the long-awaited messianic hope. The, prophe the prophetic voice of John the Baptist, the historical and theological significance of the Jordan River, and the inauguration of Jesus' ministry through baptism, all illustrate the seamless integration of the Old and New Testaments. Jesus' life and mission bring to fruition the divine promises made to the patriarchs, the prophets, 
and the people of Israel. Establishing the new covenant through his baptism and the commencement of his public, public ministry, Jesus establishes the new covenant characterized by grace, redemption, and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The new covenant fulfills and transcends the old, offering a renewal, a renewed relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The sacrament of baptism initiated by Jesus' own baptism becomes a powerful symbol of this new covenant, marking the entry into the a Christian faith and the beginning of a transformed life in Christ. Inaugurating the Kingdom of God Jesus' ministry inaugurates the Kingdom of God, a spiritual realm where God's will is re realized on earth as it is in heaven. This kingdom is characterized by justice, mercy, and love, reflecting the nature and values of God. Jesus' teachings, miracles, and sacrificial death all point to the establishment of His kingdom, inviting all people to enter into a relationship with God and experience His transformative grace. Insights into the Messiah, Messiah's Mission By understanding the historical, cultural, and theological context of Jesus' life and ministry, we gain deeper insights into the significance of His mission as the Messiah. His identification with humanity his fulfillment of prophecy, and his establishment of the new covenant reveal the comprehensive scope of God's redemptive plan. Jesus' life and ministry demonstrate God's faithfulness to his promises and his desire to restore and reconcile all creation to himself. In conclusion, the announcement of the Messiah through John the Baptist, the significance of the Jordan River, and the baptism of Jesus provide a profound understanding of the fulfillment of God's promises in the inauguration of His kingdom. These events mark the transition from the old covenant to the new, highlighting the central role of Jesus as the Messiah and the transformative impact of his mission on the world. Thank you for watching this episode of Messianic Fulfillment, Jesus is the culmination of the Old Testament promises. We explored how Jesus is the perfect fulfillment of God's plan, embodying the hope and promises of the Old Testament. His arrival, teaching, and mission brought about the ultimate reconciliation between God and humanity, and understanding his role is key to comprehending salvation history. If you found today's session insightful, be sure to join us next time for episode 20, where we will dive deeper into the journey to Jerusalem, Jesus' preparation, and the cost of discipleship. We'll explore the significance of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, the parables he taught, and what it means to truly follow him. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. See you in the next episode.